So was it a mistake to win in Alaska? Um, What's up, fellow journeyers? Yes, we are back. And yes, we are super excited to have our own bed. It and feels know where things are at good. And we run quickly. I mean, there's a reason we love RV living. Definitely <laughs> missed this RV. We missed home. So I think to lay some groundwork for this story, because this is a pretty cool story. I know sometimes in our videos it might look like we're, we're fearless or we're just uh, nonchalant or we, you know, go into Alaska in the winter when you could be in the Keys. Who, who, who does, does that? that? <laughs> like, for us, if we want to write a great story, we've got to face some fears. I was messaging back and forth on a personal message with t someone on Team Journey this week and I was telling them about something I had on my bucket list and they said, wow, you're fearless. And that's when it hit me. I thought, I'm actually a, a terrified person. I'm far <laughs> from fearless. But what I think that comment made me realize is even though I have fears, I enjoy overcoming fear. Mm. And I always wanted to see Alaska in the winter, but I was fearful that it would be uncomfortable. We might <laughs> not survive it. If you feel like life is passing you by, if you feel like you're not writing a great story, and yet the thought of facing fears or the thought of doing things that are uncomfortable is something that you don't ever want to do, like it's it's just really hard to great, write a great story without overcoming some of those fears. Thank you, Julie, for that. A mind-blowing moment. So our story starts, if you're going to Alaska in the summer, one of the places people talk about going is Chena Hot Springs. But I just heard, yeah, it's okay in the summer, but in the winter. Let's get in for our freezes. What? Right. This is it. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. I've seen the world on my own, but it doesn't look the same. Black and blue, and I don't know why I ever looked away. The sun is always shining, even when it goes away. Until it comes back around, I'm here to light the way. Better together. Better together. Better you can tell, together. look, your hair is like frozen. Your eyelashes are frozen, your beard, like you freeze once you go under the water. Definitely worth the stop. The Ice Museum is also really cool. I think my favorite part of the Ice Museum, because we're like on this whole like, let's uh, let's live a great story, we considered, so you can pay, I think it's $400 extra, instead of staying in a regular room, to stay in these Ice Museum rooms. What was $600 a night? So it's $400 above and beyond the usual price, so you pay $600 a night instead of $200 a night for a regular room, because you get a regular room in addition in case you chicken out and everything, which we <laughs> probably would. But we, we talked ourselves out of it, we almost stayed. We were so close. We were so close. Yeah. So you guys want to go in these rooms? Yeah. We could have stayed in here instead of our, our hotel room. Is he said they bring in beds and fur blankets. Yeah, it's probably still cold. It's a polar bear. What? Is that a polar bear? You sure? It looks like a moose. It's a polar bear. <laughs> You're right. It's a polar bear. Come see the other one? Yeah, let's see the other one. Here's the master suite, I think. How cool. You guys will jump on the bed? I one jump. little monkey jumping on the bed. Looks like this plant got a little bit cold, didn't it? <laughs> If it was it. just Nathan and I, but we're like <laughs> the staying kids, in a freezer with the kids. We ask the kids, yeah, they're like, yeah, we'll stay in the room that's made of ice all night. And we're like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's probably a good way to blow a 400 bucks. Uh, Prevailing questions as we go along, did we see the Northern Lights in Chena Hot Springs? We did not. Uh, and so we moved from Chena to our next location, uh, which Marissa had rented a yurt. So still a really good chance to see the Northern Lights. So the idea with the yurt in this place Beautiful, just overlooking the mountains mm -hmm. and pretty cool just to stay in a yurt. I'd never done that at all. Well, um, I was told if you're coming to Alaska, a yurt is a very Alaskan experience. And that was one of the things we wanted. When someone says it's an Alaskan experience, I'm like, okay, let's try this. So we stayed in the yurt and this is pretty much probably gonna be our last chance to see the lights we're figuring. Cause once we get in Anchorage, you've got the ambient light stuff mm -hmm. and it's, it's just harder and it's farther south. Possible, but not like Yeah, yeah. One more night in the yurt. Did we see the Northern Lights? No, we struck out with the Northern Lights again. And so I don't know if we keep the cliffhanger or not on whether or not we saw the Northern Lights. Yeah, it did not happen. And I know a lot of people are gonna want to know if we visited a souvenir shop in Alaska. I have something to show you. I don't, this isn't me acting. I have no clue what's going on right now. 
did in fact visit the souvenir shop this time. Oh, okay. Because we said we weren't going to visit the souvenir <laughs> shop. Right. But, 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 um, <laughs> but it's not, not a baby this time. It's Northern Lights. My friend that lives in Alaska yeah. knew we didn't get to see them. So Northern Lights. There you go. Yeah. But, um, Since we didn't get to see them. Thank you, Christina. It's not a baby this time. It's not a JJ from the souvenir shop, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me show. I've got something for you too, so. Apparently I don't wear enough flannel, uh, but Matthew <laughs> bought me this flannel shirt. And so thank you, Matthew. But not just that, because we were gonna pay a tour guide to do this tour on a snow machine for a date to see this glacier. And Matthew overheard us and Matthew said, hey, I'll take you. So him and his girlfriend took us on this tour to see this glacier. This trip was epic. Glacier. Incredible. <laughs> Never seen anything like, like it. Like <laughs> another world. Marissa is not nervous at all. Uh <laughs> We are very experienced uh, at snow machining. Oh, done what, twice, I've done it once. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a little nervous. Okay. I heard something about a water crossing and that's what's making me a little nervous. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so Marissa's already encountered a white moose. She dodged last time she rode. We didn't get it on camera, but and then her, she just kind of like slowly tipped over. The cool thing <laughs> is, I don't know if the snow is thick as here as it is in Talkeetna where we're snow machining last time. If you tip over, like, it's just like falling into a bunch of feathers or something. It, it was a You don't want to do it at 80 miles yeah. an hour. Right. We're not going 80 no, miles an hour. No, this was like on a turn and it was like, yeah, like that super white slow. Moose out of nowhere. So we're going to watch out for those today. I've heard there's a lot of them out here. <laughs> well, I had to choose ledge or tree and I chose ledge. So. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> So we came up this ridge right here and then came down and uh, Marissa and Kat are not behind us. It took a little bit too long. So Matthew's going to check and see what's up. Hoping they're okay. What happened? Was it the white moose? It was another white moose. They're everywhere, I'm telling you. All right, Marissa, no pressure, but you gotta hit this perfect. There's a white moose right here. He's right here. Get some momentum, girl, you got it. Oh, oh, she did it. ever seen. Well, have you ever been this close to a glacier this size? I mean, we've seen them from boats and I've paddle boarded out, but I don't think I've ever seen like to this size where you can come up to it. <sighs> Complete transparency. This was hard to get here. I say that to say physically, yes. I'm not going to tell you I'm in the best shape of my life. I mean, I'm pretty active and it was, it was physically tiring to get here. But more so, I would say it was terrifying for me. I'm so glad that I pushed through and did something hard because I got this. I'm not gonna lie, when we were coming down this path and this glacier was in view, I started bawling. I started bawling because I was physically exhausted. <laughs> But it's because I was so terrified coming out here that I would flip or that I would wreck. And I was just so terrified of learning something new. But it felt good to push myself out of my comfort zone. And that's why Nathan and I love this lifestyle. Because it makes us step out of our comfort zone and try something new. Do you see an elephant? I see an elephant. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Where? Yeah. This one looks like... The middle? See the brown spot that looks like an eye and it looks like a trunk coming down and then an elephant body? Uh, okay, sure. Gotta be creative. Felt like just the most epic way to cap off our Alaska adventure and just writing this story. And I even blended in. I didn't know Marissa was filming this, but Marissa had been talking about how proud of herself she was for like riding these snow machines on her own. And, um, <laughs> 
everything's going really well. But we got to this one part. We could see the trucks from where we were. We're like, this is it. We're I done. literally <laughs> said, yay, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're on these snow machines and we got one more side slope where you got to kind of shift your weight on the snow machine or it'll just flip. So Marissa did. I don't know if it turned a little bit or what, but it caught a little ridge or something. And then it all just kind of went downhill from there. Literally downhill. <laughs> I went tumbling downhill. <laughs> snow machine flipped and she rolled all the way into this water oh, right God, down here. Ice. She is drenched. <laughs> oh man. White moose strikes again. So this this body of water was ice. She busted through the ice and like just landed in, just kind of laying there in her. her that's she wasn't gonna sink. I mean, this red. Uh, it wasn't right. very deep either. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't deep anyways. But <laughs> like you're like just stand up, Marissa. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that actually wasn't even the worst part. The fact that Marissa was gonna be soaked from head to toe for the what two hour drive back. That was the funny part. To Anchorage. That was actually the funny part. <laughs> Marissa flipped her snowmobile and fell in some water. And then we all, you know, we laughed and we're glad she was okay and the whole deal. But then we got back to the truck to load up the snowmobiles and her phone was missing. If we lost the phone, it's one thing. Yeah. But the way we travel, this is good and bad. You may be like, it's a terrible idea, Nathan. I always keep some cash in here. I keep my license. We keep our uh, main main card in there. Yeah, that's how both of us. Both of us. This we is both like that. Our, so. his wallet and my purse is this. This yeah. is our we life. We don't carry wallets. We don't carry purses. <laughs> Because when we move fast, we know it's risky, but we feel like it comes out better to do that than it does to have the extra things and possibly lose it when we're already... Our, our hands are always tied up with camera gear and kids. Okay, I'm going to walk a little ways back that way. So we assumed it was in the water. I used find my iPhone. It showed it was like in some random location close to the glacier. But then like after 20 minutes of looking in the water where we thought it was, it updated it to be 0.8 miles this way. So Matthew is riding the snowmobile that way. I'm re-walking the trail here. We really thought it was in the water back there. They're gonna, the girls are back there looking in the water with a shovel. It's like two feet deep, totally murky. It's got ice, snow, everything on top of it. It's a real mess. We've gotta find this. <laughs> We've gotta find it. Yeah, it wasn't that she lost the phone. That was bad enough. It was the fact that she lost her license. Even the, even the card, like I could just cancel that. It's okay, the cash. We have no license and we're supposed to leave the next day to fly back. To Tennessee would not happen. Here I am walking on a frozen lake on a snow machine path to a glacier in 20 something degree weather in Alaska in the winter looking for our iPhone that also has our license, credit card, and some cash. <sighs> what a day. It was a crash from being so up because I was feeling so excited, such beautiful scenery. I was feeling proud of what we she had accomplished be. on the snow machine yeah. and then I just felt like I was letting everybody down I guess because we were all searching for this phone like everybody's digging in the ice water we're shoveling I walked this trail for about 45 minutes I dug in that water for about 45 minutes Matthew took a snowmobile for about 45 minutes and rode the trail and then Matthew came back and started digging where I've been digging for like close to an hour and they just yelled that he found it so let's see How'd you find it so fast? Where'd you dig? Right, right so right here? Right here, pretty much. Right here on the edge, right where Okay. Oh my goodness. Well, I should let you do that from the beginning. It was dinging. What? I was just cleaning it off. So it's good to go? Yeah, I was just drying it off. Oh my goodness. Matthew, ma'am, today started with you giving me this shirt. You made my day. But you just made Marissa's year by finding this phone. It looks like it still works perfectly. He rolled up his sleeves and felt for it. I can't believe I didn't like bust it up with a shovel anyways. I shoveled for like close to an hour. <sighs> what a day. We found it. Matthew found it. Yeah. It was in the water where he fell. Was it really? Yeah, it was in the water where he fell. I'll look forever for it. And it just, it was still on. It was still dinging. You found it in the water? It was in the water. Yeah. Where? He, he just put his hands in and felt around and no felt way. it. Yeah. And we need to just roll up our sleeves and get it done like a real Alaskan. Wow. It's, it's okay, Marissa. It's okay. <laughs> well, I was just talking about how my face is so frozen I can't talk. Well, I was our just talking so about pushing myself and doing something and how proud it made me. And then I like fell in the water and lost my phone. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> oh. Uh. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Go back to Tennessee now. So. <laughs> I was about to say we might just become Alaskans. Right? <laughs> we can't drive, but. I don't think Alaskans cry. I need to stop. <laughs> I 
think when you face your fears or when you're getting outside of your box and you have these super, and, and this is RV life too, like your highs are super high and your lows are super Absolutely. low. So we were super excited and super pumped to be in Alaska, to experience something like this, to go snow machining, but then to be like, oh my goodness, how are we gonna fly home? Or I just take the kids and, but I don't, that's not a win either. Like <laughs> me and these two kids on a plane by myself, like. <laughs> so everyone was safe, <laughs> me, the phone, the snow machine. So was it a mistake? to winter in Alaska. Um, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> no, I don't want to Absolutely not. <laughs> no. It, it, was, it was an epic experience. How just beautiful and magical, but challenging, mm -hmm. but otherworldly. And honestly, I'm gonna be honest and say, it was not as intimidating as I had it in my head. By March, they're mm. starting to get more sunlight, mm. warmth, still able to see Northern Lights and experience all that. So I just think March was a really epic time to go. No, I think big picture with this, and this is a lot like Hawaii as well. We love our RV and we love living in an RV. So if you're dreaming of living in an RV, that is an awesome dream. But there are also times where because you live in an RV, if mm -hmm. you've let go of a lot of the material possessions of the house and the upkeep and the land and all those things, then you, you can just park the RV and you can do things like Hawaii or do things like Alaska. And we want, we want to show that side of things too. We want all of you to see that, to have that motivation to say, okay, what does my story look like? What's next for me? What scares me? Maybe it's not Alaska. <laughs> Maybe it's snakes. Maybe it's weather. Maybe well, I'm it's terrified of snakes. Yeah, yeah. We're both terrified of snakes. <laughs> Maybe it's driving an RV. Maybe it's how to, how to, you know, making money on the road. Maybe, you know, any right. list of things that's between you and your dream. We want you to know on the other side is going to be a stronger you. And it's going to be a stronger you with a better story. And so if you want to hear more about not just our story, but we have a community called Team Journey, where for the first time, was the first time we've ever done this. I'm we, so <laughs> excited about this. We have live chats monthly-ish, and uh, we're going to bring on somebody from Team Journey, and we're going to talk about their story, where they're at, what their fears are, how do they get from point A to point B, almost like a coaching call, I guess, with us. If you want to check it out, if you want to see that, be a part of that, experience that, ask your own questions. And just ultimately face your fears with a community who is also facing that fear to write a better story. Go to teamjourney.com. We would love to have you there and be a part of that experience. Well, that concludes our Alaska route, our Alaska story. Our next segment, our next story is going to be unlike anything we've ever done. And we cannot wait to share it with no, you. No, this is something we've never done. It's all something we've never done. You guys um, are going to love it. <laughs> something in an RV and with an RV. It's, it's all new. This, it's it's going to be fun. But until next video, we'll catch you guys later. <laughs>